I didn't see that coming. So we got a call for a side-by-side -side that's got the wheels all busted off of it. It's down kind of by the Bear Claw Poppy Trailhead area, Virgin River, Western Bloomington. I haven't been here before, so I'm gonna go see what it's like. How hot is it out there? It is like 105, 110 degrees. It's hot today, cooking. We'll go get them out. Okay, we're grabbing gas right now. All right, like Tom said, we're fueling up. And believe it or not, we're fueling up with 91 octane. I know that it's measured differently in other countries. So this would probably be like your 94 octane or something. I don't know what number you use, but your number is higher, but it's the same grade of fuel. So why do we run 91 octane? Uh, we do get a lot of comments that we're wasting our money buying this because they watched a documentary or read an article that said that 91 octane is doesn't help you get more power or a better fuel economy. So you're totally right. Using higher octane fuel has absolutely no benefit to your engine. Unless your engine is tuned for it, and this vehicle is. So we were out here just a couple of days ago, actually. We rescued a truck and a camp trailer. They'd driven off this and spent a couple of days camping. And when they turned around, they weren't able to get back up. This is a fairly popular place. We've pulled, I don't know, 10 or 12 vehicles out of here over the last couple of years. Yeah, that's a bunch. I guess I haven't been on this fork. I did go out the other way one time to Bloomington Cave. I think I got the guy that slid off in the mud, so oh, yeah. I've been kind of by here. I'm gonna try to show you the whole bend here. I see somebody right here. I think this is them. This is gonna be a little bit of a job. See, they sent me the pin up here from right here. And I'm like, oh good, they didn't go past the scary spot. No, nope, they're past the scary spot. Oh, that's, you're right, that's scary. So you think this will drive up that with the trailer? Loaded, a heavy trailer? We're gonna try. All right, that is steep. I'm gonna turn around, because I think even though the front end's broken, it's not ball joints, I think we're gonna load this on the front. Yeah. You think we can steer it out with a little muscle? I don't know. What broke, tie rod? Like it's a... just bent. It's, oh. I think both of them are bent. Oh, no, so it's that, stuck, just towed that, out. Just that one. They'll both be towed out like this. Turn that, the other one's not turning. It's not? Yeah, turn. That, this one on this side is not turning at all. Okay, so it's a broken, it's broken somewhere else too. So. Oh, it's, it's, it's turning, it's just bending the tie rod more. Oh. So I guess we should load this backwards. Let me think of how to do that. Okay. I it's got not you. stuck, it's busted. It's broken. So you're gonna pull it out first and then we'll load? Yes. All right, we're gonna get this pulled back onto the road. We're gonna put Tom in there. Whatever maneuvering he has to do to get it lined up with the trailer on the road, that's what we're shooting for. Okay. I would just stand on the brakes for a second. All right, step one of this operation went swimmingly. How many steps do you think we got? No one's ever asked me that before. <laughs> We're gonna pull this up to the back and then get ready to load it on. All right, we got the winch hooked up to the broken Honda. I'm gonna pull it right on right now, using nothing more than my thumb. This is gonna wipe the ramps right out from underneath itself. You need to push this one in a little to catch it, or what do you? Uh-oh. Oh, I 
didn't see that coming. Let's see what happens. Man, that, those wheels are just not pointed the same direction, are they? Yeah, I think we'll make it. It's going to fall off the ramp or catch the trailer first? It's going to do both at the same time. Okay. You got it. Okay. The next step is going to be here in a park. I'm going to pull this on. So why you got it in park? So it won't just roll off the front of the trailer. You just wanted to drag? Yeah. It won't hurt it none to drag. That's it right there. We'll get these ramps put up, get it tied down, and then we're gonna hit the road, Jack. So don't you come back. No more, no more, no more. In case you're wondering how hot it actually is, the reason we look like a couple of idiots standing out here, is this 112 degrees. Oh, they always want us to give the humidity too. Would you say it's like 15% humidity? 20? Maybe 20. Know. 15 to 20 percent humidity does it it might tell us oh well that'd be nice it's not high it's not going to be impressive but the heat is still oh all by it's six it's six percent humidity oh all right but it, it's a dry heat oh that's not going anywhere i'm going to turn around and we're going to climb up that feature i'm going to go for a run and show it to you this behind me is a good little climb when just a regular vehicle with no trailer on the back. This is gonna be a beastie climb for the more bear pulling this razor. We'll see how it does. So I'm impressed, that didn't hardly slow you down. Sure didn't, not when you have a more bear on your side. Glad we had one today. The banana would have been a little bit light for that job. I still think it would have done it fine, but the more bear's got a thousand pounds on the banana and that helps when you're uh, driving straight up walls. I like the banana's low gear. What do you think about the 272 and the banana? Oh yeah, this one? definitely better at crawling. Everybody agrees for that. So I definitely want lower gears in the Morver. I'm thinking about putting a three to one transfer case in. What do you think about that? I think it's a great idea. A little foreshadowing of things to come. If we get it off the trailer, it should be able to drive uh, okay. into the garage. Perfect. I mean, to leave black marks and stuff, but it'll drive in there. Okay, awesome. All right, we're gonna have Tom drive off of this with the crazy wheels. Beautiful. This is actually going to go off. No, stop, stop. Okay, now it keeps coming. Super nice and slow. It doesn't get slow there yet. Luckily, they're kind of made for off road situation. Now, look at that. It's coming right in here. All right. All right, that works. We're gonna do this part in the shade. Yes, come on. I'm waiting for somebody to comment like, oh, it's only 6% humidity, it's not that hot. We're gonna go back to the yard and get our little heat gun out and show you how hot it is. Who gets the shirt? I'll take a shirt. You're gonna have to take credit for breaking it then. Sweet, I got it. Yeah, it looks good, man. Sweet. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you. I appreciate have a good day. it. All right, we got that job done. We're back at the yard. But before I let you go, I want to show you something. If you've never experienced dry heat, let me tell you why it tries to kill you in a different way than human heat does. 
I've spent some time in Tennessee and South Carolina and Florida. Um, I've been there when it's been 100 degrees with like 98% humidity. And you're right, it's stifling. But the difference is, is the ground is not trying to kill you. We're back here in Hurricane. It was 112 when we were at the job. It's 108 here now. And let's see how hot metal is. Got my temperature gun here. So this right here is 141 degrees. The ground temperature, if I can just get something here on the ground, the ground temperature is 130 degrees. So not only do we have the temperature, the ambient air that's around us that is incredibly hot, the ground is this radiant heat that just doesn't go away. So I don't want to hear about how it's a dry heat and it's not that bad. It's really, really bad. So I got a call from Matt that we have a job somewhere out here in Sand Hollow, and he's on the south end of St. George. He asked me to grab the Morver and drive out here somewhere where the blacktop ends and the dirt road begins, which I just got to, it's dirt outside, and uh, wait for him to send me a pin of the next place to go. I don't know how this is gonna work, Kind of sounds like a game, but I'm here waiting for a pin to see where to go next. Looked like it was a white SUV, some kind of SUV totally buried in the sand out here. I think the guy doesn't want to spend the night, so we're going to try and get him right now. The weather, it is dark outside, it is still warm and uh, calm. So the gas situation says we're at a half tank. I think that means a full tank, I think. So like Tom said, we got a call. We were way over in a different city getting our hair cut because that's what we do. Look how, look how sharp we all look. So anyway, we sent Tom to gather up the stuff. We're going to try to meet him out there. He's actually a little bit ahead of us. So I'm just going to give him waypoints because he's not super familiar with the area. We're just going to try to catch up with him. But what's first, Hefe? We gotta get gas, cause I'm 21 miles to empty, and yes, my gas gauge works. We're kinda out here in the desert, and there's nothing around us, but there is a lone gas station, and it's one of those kind of gas stations where there's no store or attendant. You just, it's just a gas pump sticking up out of the sand. You put your credit card in, gas comes out. There's my pin, time to start driving. Okay, Matt just sent me four more pins. I think he wants me to follow them in a certain order to avoid going some bad direction. So I'm just gonna keep following pins. Hopefully he's at the end of one of them. You guys know that I'm a gambler and there's two ways to get to where we're going. There is a long way that is smooth and fast and a short way that is a dirt road. Now we're not gonna have any way of knowing which way is the correct answer, but we do have to pick one. And I say short way dirt road. I would prefer going the short way dirt road just because it's fun. Hey, I will be your navigator. Okay. We're going to put this thing in Baja mode and see how fast we can make it. Do you think we're going to beat Tom there? Safely. No, Tom's already there. Oh, he is? Yeah. How do I get a call to come in? I just have to leave the area. That's all I have to do. Yep. If it's dead, all I got to do is get in my car and drive away. This is where the pavement ends. I don't know if this is the right way or not, but it's the way we're going. We're making pretty good time. We've got some really sharp, like we've got a right angle right turn, right angle left turn coming up, but I think we're doing pretty good. We're making good time. I have no idea where Tom is. We should call him. What's your 20? Yeah, what's your 20? Well, I'm just coming to the third pin, like right now, and then I'll go to the fourth one. Okay. Oh, he is so far ahead of us. And I am pretty sure that Tom is already in the sand dunes. We're about to make a sharp left turn here, at which point we will be, well, so further we would, along the track. If we would have gone pavement, this is where we would have come in on pavement. Right there, there's pavement right there. Here's our sharp turn. Now that we've gone, what do you think? I think it was a lot more fun, but I don't I know if it was faster. Six. Yeah, I think it's very close. What do you think, Carter? Which way was faster? This way, definitely. That sucker all the way. We travel at a safe speed. And I misunderstood. I thought I was meeting Matt right here, but I'm supposed to meet the customer right here. I am at the final pin and I don't see him, so I'm going to just kind of drive around in a circle and I think he should be close by somewhere. Somewhere out here. It's very dark. 
I was driving along, I saw his flashlight shining, so I stopped by and picked up the customer. What was your name? Phil, nice Phil. to meet you. Good to meet you, man. <laughs> okay, he says his vehicle's not too far up here, so we're gonna go check it out. So I just talked to Tom Tom. He says he has eyes on the customer. We're about 15 minutes behind him. Okay, I gotta show you the vehicle here. Check this out, this thing is cool. This is a fun vehicle, man, and this thing is clean. Oh, you got it buried pretty good down here. Yeah. How'd it do? It did so well. It literally did so well. Pretty good up to this spot, huh? It, 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 it was, I got too cocky. I got a running start coming, coming down like from up there and it just kind of got up here and around here I was like, I'll make it. I think if I made it to like that part right there, I, it would, I would have been fi like fine at least to turn you around. You would have had it. Things capable, things way more capable than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're gonna get hooked up to this and see what we can do. I'll talk to Matt. I don't know if he's coming or he said I'll probably that, just go for it. He said the it. Bronco is, is right behind you. All right, all right. Well, we'll see him eventually, but maybe we'll be done by the time he gets here and he can just eat his victory pie. Yeah. We finally made it to the dunes here and now we just gotta pick our way through it till we can find our guy. It's way more complicated at night, that's for sure. spotted them they're right there look who showed up how's it going good imagine running into you out here how was your trip out here oh lovely i want you to move your bronco i'm gonna have rep bring the morver up here in front and we were we're gonna get out of here which way did you come in from I came in right here. there's a trail right here i, I can i can kind okay. of okay so we're gonna take you up here and then send you down the road down that sure, way sure sure back up back up Okay, stop. We got two good points right here. So we're gonna build a bridle. On that. Um, yep. Is that gonna cut or you think it'll hold? Yeah. Let's put it like that. Alright. Okay. Uh, yeah. So what is this? A rover? Montero. It's a Mitsubishi Montero first oh, gen. Oh, it's a manual. Yeah, it's cool, huh? Hey. Can you make sure chickens get locked up? I'm out here in the middle of the desert rescuing people and she's trying to talk to me about chickens getting locked up. Can you believe that? Are you guys really on a recovery? Yeah. Did you did you not send her a text? No. <laughs> Rhett did not. Oh, uh, Rhett didn't send the text. Sorry. My fault. All right. We'll make sure the chickens get locked up. Well, Carter has mountain biking at 5 a.m. I know. I didn't pick this. Hey, do you want to, what's your name? Phil. Would you like to chew Phil out? Because he's the one that got stuck. Yeah, it's, it's my fault. It is my fault. I'm sorry. It, 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 it will never happen again. Phil says it will never happen again. That's good enough for me. Is that good enough for you, Jamie? Yep. All right. Okay, we're hey, back. You're out. off the hook, Phil. So what we should probably do is put you in the Bronco. Dad. <laughs> what? The only thing I've driven off road that's a manual is leave a deep samurai. You'll do just fine. Right here, we'll be straight. But don't do that until we start moving. I am going to drive through here, up around there, all the way over hills and dales up to Zen Rock, and then down the trail. I'm going to run like crazy. No trouble finding the customer, but in the Bronco, we had some trouble finding them. And I'm gonna show you the difference right now. Tom had the scanner bar and uh, we didn't. So we kind of struggled driving in circles. Tom went straight to him. Total game changer, that scanner bar. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Really appreciate it. There you go. Thank you very much. I can't believe I have one. 
Get them out. They got me out. Well, got to get to the road, but they got me out. Oh, yeah. Well, you, you just follow <laughs> Make sure us out, you of get here. out of here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate no it. Oh, that went good. That was fun. So I was setting up to grab him out downward, and I'm always trying to get better at what we do. Why did you choose to go upward? So whenever I'm in the dunes and somebody's he wasn't super deep in the dunes, no. but we had some dunes to pull him out of. Pulling backwards really tricky because it's hard enough to keep track of your wheel direction when you're going forward. When you're going backwards, it's infinitely Even, uh, worse. Gotcha. And you can't see, you're looking in your mirrors and you don't, you're don't. you not familiar with the terrain or what's coming up. So depending on what you find when you're there, sometimes people say you always go out the same way you go in. In the sand, that is far less true. And I wanted him to come out this road. This is the road I'm coming out. Yeah, that's I, true. This is the main road in and out of here, so yeah. you got him right to it. Yeah, so I knew there was a good path that way, and I didn't want to reconnect. Just one, one connect and uh, and go. I think the way it was set up, it would have worked. And that and that happens a lot in recovery. I know people compare us to Rory and they'll compare us to Casey Liddell and even BSF Recovery. And they're like, oh, well, that's not the way they do it, whatever. In each particular individual job, there's only one way that we're going to do it. So you don't get to see all the other ways. Yeah, you don't, you don't get to see all the other ways. Okay, there you have it. So as always, we showed you how we did it this time, not necessarily the correct way to do it, but how we did it this time. Thanks for watching. Look at that, 159 degrees. It's hot. <laughs>